An incense cone wafts a plume of perfumed smoke into the air. In Japan, there's a long tradition of appreciating the subtle nuances of fragrant scents. This sensibility finds its peak of refinement in kodo, the traditional incense ceremony. The aim of this practice is for participants to clear their minds of all distractions and concentrate their whole beings on each fragrance. In recent years, a wide variety of incense has become available and people are enjoying incense in more casual settings. In Japan, this tradition dates back more than 1,000 years to the times of the ancient imperial court, where it was popular among the nobles. Recently, one of the Kodo schools held an extremely formal event in which participants compared the qualities of aromatic woods some 500 years old. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is the fragrances of Japan. We introduce this refined tradition that has been passed down since ancient times. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Our theme for today is the scents of Japan and I've come to visit this shop which specializes in incense. There's an enormous range of incense to choose from here and they all come in different colors and shapes as well. You've got sticks, cones, coils and each of them has their own distinctive fragrance. Some are kind of spicy and aromatic, others are rich and fruity. There's a really wide range to choose from. The main ingredients in each kind of incense are types of aromatic wood which come from extremely rare and valuable trees that grow in tropical rainforests. The finest of all aromatic woods is considered to be this one here, which in this state is known in Japanese as kara. Just one gram of this will set you back about 15,000 yen or $150. Each kind of incense is a mixture of powdered aromatic wood with other natural ingredients and there are many, many different types. We have just a few of them on display here. For example, these are cloves, cinnamon, we've got star anise here which will be familiar with people who like perno. This is frankincense and myrrh and again if you have even a cursory familiarity with the Bible you'll know the names although you may not know what they look like. Anyway, let's go straight on and take a look at how incense is appreciated in Japan. Incense has been a part of life in Japan since ancient times, and the way it's made and used has evolved over the centuries. When visiting graves, people burn incense sticks in honor of the departed. Incense originated as an important form of Buddhist ritual offering. It was believed to cleanse worshippers of the impurities of the world. The incense burned at graves has a particular fragrance based on Japanese cedar needles. These days, incense is part of daily life in a vast variety of fragrances. A wide palette of incense blends has been developed and the sticks come in many different shapes and colors. There's an incense for every taste and occasion. These are sachets. Aromatic materials are packed into pouches, which can be stored in bags, pockets, or other places where they will give off a pleasing scent. There's also a long tradition of scented stationery. Placed in the envelope, it delivers a fragrance along with the message. The main ingredients in incense are aromatic woods taken from certain species of trees that grow in tropical rainforests. These trees secrete resins in response to damage or disease. Because the resins build up over a period of centuries, these aromatic trees are very rare. The most fragrant woods are worth more than their weight in gold. This is an incense class.
For a long time, most students at classes like this were elderly, but recently growing numbers of young people have also started attending. Many people are interested because there's an aroma boom these days. When I found out that Japan has its own long tradition of using incense, I wanted to try it out. Some shops will make up custom mixed sachets of incense according to each individual customer's taste. The scent that you have in mind, what season would you associate it with? Early summer. This shop stocks about 100 different aromatic ingredients from around the world. After carefully blending the ingredients for over half an hour, the incense maker closes in on the scent that the customer has in mind. Finally, it's ready. A one-of-a-kind, unique, personalized fragrance. There are also kits on the market for making your own incense sticks. They allow you to mix up whatever fragrance you choose from a number of ingredients. You add paste and water, and then squeeze the mixture through a funnel to create the incense stick. After drying it for a day, it's ready. You don't know how it will turn out. That's the most enjoyable part of it. In Japan, incense adds its fragrance to daily life in many different ways. Recently, there's been a considerable increase in the number of fragrances available as incense. Let's take a look at some of these over here. This one's called a gallic, and this is sandalwood. These two are pretty much uh, orthodox types of incense. And then next to that, we've got bamboo here. This is green tea. This is cypress. And this is yuzu, which is a particular kind of aromatic citrus fruit, which is native to Japan. I've always been partial to citrus type fragrances, so I'm going to try out one of these yuzu. That's a lot lighter than I was expecting, actually. It's a very light, fruity kind of smell. You would expect it to be fruity, of course, but not as aromatic as I was thinking it might be. It's very pleasant indeed. You need to have a stand for your incense as well, and again, there's a wide variety of different types. Over here on the edge, uh, this is if you use cone incense, it stands in a little uh, bed of ash in a tray like this. And we have some here that are created recently. There's a, a lot for more uh, younger type of people. In Japan, incense is used not only to create a pleasant aroma in a living space, there's also a long tradition of appreciating the aromatic woods themselves, not just as an ingredient in incense. In Japanese, this is known as kodo, literally the way of incense. Uh, in English, sometimes it's called the incense ceremony. The tradition goes back about 500 years, and next we're going to take a look at an example of an incense appreciation ceremony from the Shino school of kodo. Kodo is the traditional Japanese art of appreciating the scents of aromatic woods. At incense ceremonies, participants follow specified procedures and focus on the fragrances. This helps to promote a state of calmness. The procedures for a ceremony start with the preparations. A hollow is formed in the center of the ash filling the incense cup. Into this hollow, a red-hot piece of charcoal compound is placed. Then the ash is formed into a conical mound over it. The mound is flattened into five faces. Then sets of ten lines are impressed into each face. Every step of the process requires the utmost attention. At the apex of the mound, a hole is formed to allow the heat to rise up. Through this hole, 
the hot charcoal compound can be seen glowing. Finally, a sliver of mica is laid over the hole and a small chip of aromatic wood is placed on top of it. Shielded from the direct heat of the charcoal compound, the wood chip gives off its scent as it starts to smolder. There are also fixed rules governing the way the scent is sniffed. You rotate the cup so that the surface designated as the front faces away from you. Then you raise it close to your nose with one hand cupping the top. Corridor practitioners say that you have to listen to the scent. There's much more to it than merely sniffing the fragrance. You have to cultivate the right frame of mind to focus on what the incense has to tell you. The fragrances of the aromatic woods used in Kordo are classified into five categories. The first is sweet, a honey-like fragrance. The second is bitter, like the aroma of citrus peel grilling over a fire. The third is spicy, like black pepper, chilies, or other hot spices. The fourth is sour, like pickled ume plums. And the fifth is salty, the aroma of seaweed placed over a fire. Using these five categories as a guideline, the practitioners listen out for which quality is inherent in each specific scent. The incense ceremony may also include refined games in which participants try to distinguish between the aromatic woods being burned. This game is called Genji Ko, a reference to the tale of Genji, the classic work of Japanese literature written about a thousand years ago. The participants listen to five different scents in order. Sometimes all five scents presented are different. Sometimes two or more are repeated. Each participant must indicate if they think any are the same. The participants write down their answers using special symbols. Five vertical lines are drawn with bars connecting those scents judged to be the same. This person's answer indicates that the second and fourth scents are the same. There are 52 possible permutations for these symbols. Each pattern is assigned a name based on the titles of chapters in the tale of Genji. The game of Genji Ko allows participants to enjoy literary illusions along with the fragrances. Finally, the participants' answers are tallied. There are various other games like this based on scents, which are enjoyed in particular seasons or at annual events. Here we have a corridor set laid out. It's a very faint fragrance, extremely, what's the word, delicate. You really have to concentrate quite hard to get it, actually. It's, I'm going to steal an extra one. Hmm, this could become quite a habit, I think. Incense has a long history in Japan, and we're going to take a look at it now. Incense was brought to Japan in the 6th century, along with Buddhism. It was originally used for purification in temples, as it was thought to drive away defilement.
In the 9th century, the nobility at the imperial court began to use incense for their enjoyment, separate from any religious significance. At that time, incense generally took the form of small balls of kneaded aromatics. Various kinds of wood and other ingredients were blended with binders such as honey. For the aristocrats, blending incense was regarded as one of the essential marks of being cultured. They would burn their original creations, filling their rooms with subtle fragrances. The Shaw Soin is an imperial storehouse in Nara. Its collection of precious artefacts includes a piece of aromatic wood that's considered the finest specimen in all of Japan. This wood is thought to encompass each of the five categories of fragrance. From around the 13th century, the use of kneaded incense fell out of fashion. The ruling samurai warriors of that time preferred the natural fragrance of each aromatic wood on its own. Those in power vied to take possession of this precious wood. And it bears marks, suggesting that chunks were hacked off from it. During the 16th century, two of the leading men of culture consolidated the ways in which incense was appreciated. Sanjo Nishi Sanetaka and Shino Soshin. It was they who established Kodo, the way of incense. There's much more to Kodo than merely enjoying the scent of the incense. Equally important are allusions to the realms of poetry and literature. On some occasions, poems are composed on the spot to describe particular scents. Recognizing the subtle differences between fragrances, the participants express them in words. Literary erudition and a finely honed sense of smell are brought together in Kodo. It encompasses a number of aspects of Japanese aesthetics. In the 17th century, Kodo started to be practiced more widely. Implements for the incense ceremony became essential items in the trousseaus taken by girls marrying into samurai families. Many beautiful masterpieces were produced, adorned with gorgeous gold decorations. Several different schools of Kodo developed, and the practice spread to ordinary townspeople. This was how the appreciation of fragrances came to flourish in Japan. Nowadays, Kodo classes are held in venues across the country, and there are also national gatherings. This elegant tradition of appreciating aromatic fragrances remains vibrant to this day. In the incense ceremony, the participants are inspired by the subtle fragrances to conjure up images in their minds. To begin with, it was simply about enjoying the different fragrances. But after a while, people started to come up with games where the participants would evaluate a series of different scents or seek to determine which ones were the same and which ones were different. Of all the various different ways of appreciating incense, the most formal is called meiko awase. Next, we're going to take a look at that. The Shino School of Kodo has a history dating back 500 years. This is its headquarters. Recently, a traditional Meiko Awase ceremony was held here for the first time in 80 years. This is an extremely formal style of incense ceremony in which aromatic woods of the highest grade are burned and compared. The ceremony was revived by the 20th generation head of the Shino school, Sogen Hachia. His eldest son, Sohitsu Hachia, also took part. He's in line to succeed his father as the head of the school. Preparations for the ceremony start about a month in advance. Priceless aromatic woods will be used. 500 years ago, the founder of the school, Shino Soshin, 
carefully selected 61 of the most superb aromatic woods. Each of them was given an elegant poetic name and became renowned. Today, only a tiny quantity of each remains, so they're only burned on extremely rare occasions. It is those priceless aromatic woods that will be used for the upcoming ceremony. Sohitsu brings out the antique incense ceremony implements from their storeroom. Only the very finest items will do for this event. This special occasion will be an experience of inestimable value for him as the future head of the school. First, he takes out a Celadon incense cup. There is also another cup decorated with a pattern of birds which was painted in the 19th century. Either of them would be suitable. If you agonize over it, you'll never make a decision. Just pick one. We'll use the Celadon. The stately Celadon incense cup has been chosen. The day of the Meiko Awase ceremony arrives. The invited participants come from some of the most renowned families in the country. Each family has some of the 61 famous aromatic woods. Today, the participants have brought fragments with them so that the merits of each fragrance can be compared. Raite Arima is the head of the Rinzai Zen Buddhist temple, Shokokuji. The aromatic wood that Arima has brought with him is named Chidori, meaning plover. It was given that name by the shogun Ashikaga Yoshimitsu 600 years ago, when he enjoyed its smell while listening to the calls of the plovers along the seashore. Yoshitaka Tokugawa is the 22nd generation head of the Owari branch of the Tokugawa family. He has brought with him the aromatic wood called Yorokobi, or joy. This gained its name because it was used at the 50th birthday of the shogun Ashikaga Yoshimitsu. Tadahiro Konoe is in line to succeed as the head of one of Japan's leading families of court nobles. He has brought the wood called Akashi. Its name is taken from one of the main characters in the tale of Genji, the lovely and talented Lady of Akashi. Kimiko Reizei is married to the head of a line of waka poets. She has brought the wood named Nezame. This name refers to the sense of melancholy felt when awaking from sleep. Along with these four aromatic woods, two others have been brought by the head of the Shino school and his son. They will be burned as incense in pairs to compare them and judge which is superior. The first incense is Arima's Chidori. In Meiko Awase, to eliminate any preconceptions, the names of the aromatic woods are withheld. The guests have never listened to the incense that they themselves have brought, so they will have to focus themselves fully on each fragrance using both mind and spirit. Having ascertained the characteristics of the incense, they write down an image that it brings to mind. I really felt a great sense of quiet and calm. I would compare it to an ancient pine tree. The second incense is Tokugawa's Yorokobi. It 
It was very sweet and strong, with a fragrance like caramel, but with a rather more burnt quality and with an almost cloying sweetness. The results are not announced until the end of the ceremony. But in this case, four out of the six participants preferred the Yorokobi incense. The second matchup begins. Konoe's Akashi against Reizei's Nezami. This one ends four to two in favor of Akashi. Next to be compared are the fragrances chosen by the master of the Shino school and his heir. First, the master's Kurenai, meaning crimson. He chose it because it's almost spring and the name is evocative of the cherry blossom. What I wrote down was the word amusing. It made a rather delightful impression on me. The fragrance chosen by the sun and air is Hana Noeng, meaning banquet of flowers. It is said that at a banquet held in Kyoto more than 600 years ago, a great quantity of this precious incense was burned, so much that the scent blanketed the hillside. Incense passed down through the centuries. I'm awed by the weight of that history. The final matchup is decided five to one in favor of Hana Noen, the fragrance brought by the young master. At the end, the results are announced. But winning or losing is not the point of the Meiko Oase ceremony. It is a shared spiritual and intellectual experience, a collective affirmation of this way of appreciating incense. Ancient and precious aromatic woods have been burned, evoking emotions and images. This gathering of tranquil pleasure comes to a close. Kordo the elegant tradition of incense, a culture of fragrance, remains alive in present-day Japan. Aromatic woods arrived in Japan in ancient times and immediately captured people's imagination. And although none of these woods is native to Japan, they were assimilated into the existing culture, leading to the development of a highly refined aesthetic of fragrances, a tradition unique to Japan. In a sense, this is just a hunk of wood, but it's a very special hunk of wood which has acquired its unique fragrance over the span of hundreds of years. It just goes to show there's more to things than meets the eye. I'll see you again next time. Next time, we introduce spinning tops. We look at the craftsmanship that goes into making these traditional children's toys.